when I first heard that you were doing uh, The Little Mermaid and I heard King Triton, I was thinking, okay, I'm trying to, and this is live action, this is not animated. And then I saw a picture of you as King Triton and it's this, this man is born to play <laughs> King Triton. You have, I mean, I've always thought you have a regal face. You uh -huh. really do. You look. Thank you, sir. Doesn't he? Doesn't Absolutely. he? Yeah. You have the face that I could see. Of course, you have to say yes. If he yes. asks that question, you go no. No, they offer. That would be oh, great. No, no, no. no. my inclination to gainsay and neglect whatever he says. Yeah. He actually, I can say, yeah. he actually does disagree with me oh, really? most of the time. Okay. Uh, okay. But you have to see. You have to see photos of him as you shouldn't even call it I'm up on your show. I'm shocked I haven't he, yet. It's you. You are so uh, regal, and you, and I, I look at that photo and I think no one else could play King Triton in live action. I'm it's fantastic. So, I'm so happy that it happened, and also I texted Rob Marshall, which I wanted yeah. to work with since many years ago, and I said, "If there is such a thing as a King Triton with an accent, <laughs> will you consider? Look at that. Will you consider me to play it?" And he said. I swear to God, I am uh, gross. I'm in the grocery shop talking to John about you, and I was going to call you in five minutes. Oh my God! Okay. That happened. I said, "Really?" So I said that to my then seven-year-old girl, Luna is her name. I'm gonna be in The Little Mermaid, and she went, "Are you gonna play Ariel?" Oh. <laughs> no. <laughs> No. <laughs> I'm you start looking for your Anton Chigurh wig. <laughs> I could dye it red. <laughs> Eduardo! <laughs> now I want to see you as Ariel, though. Oh, my God. He's, he's that good an actor. He I can do anything. I yeah. know. I know. But I said, no, I'm going to play the father. And she was crying. Oh, I'm so happy. So oh. I went, Rob, you know, you don't, you can't imagine how happy you made me and my daughter by this offer. So oh. it's, it's, and they are watching the movie. Uh, in Spain in the premiere, and I can't wait for them to see it. You know, it's fascinating because this is a classic. Little Mermaid is, I mean, they're they're going to be thrilled. I had the experience of 10 years ago when my kids were much younger, they would have a show that they loved, and then I would get contacted by that show, coincidentally, and they would say, do you want to play this small part mm -hmm. in an episode? And I'd say, yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll do that, sure. Cause, and I'd tell the kids, and they'd be, yay. So I'd go, and I'd record it, and do my small part. And everyone would say, that was great. And then it's animation, it takes a while. And then two years later, I'd say, hey guys, it's coming out. The, I'm in that show. And they'd be like, we don't watch that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> <Absolutely>. <laughs> and that's happened to me, I think three times <laughs> where I'm trying to time what my kids think is cool. And by the time I do it, yeah. they're like, no, 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 that's over. Uh, but this will not happen to uh, you. No, but absolutely. Like my 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 child, Leo, is 12 now. Mm -hmm. When I start to, because we start to shoot this movie in January 2020, but oh, then wow. we have to stop because of the pandemic. He was 10 and and he was excited. Now he like he pretends, no, that's for that's for Luna. I'll bring only 45 friends to the screening, but that's not my kind of movie. So, yeah, right, right, right. But three, year, three years ago, he was like, yeah. But no, he will, he will love it. That's why I do Dune as well for him. I do oh, yeah. Dune for him. I do Mermaid for her and uh, some things. And I get the paycheck for both. <laughs> Which is good too, because they have exactly. to go to college. It helps. <laughs> uh, yeah, those the, the Dune movies are so visually stunning. Yeah. I, I mean, uh, just uh, it's crazy. I was mind blowing, mind blowing. And even though when I was first watching it, I uh, the the first Dune, the first Dune that came out a few years ago, I was I was mm. I didn't understand every the significance of every single moment, but as a whole, it was so beautiful and and powerful. Yeah. The the I've never it, it just looks different. You know, we're we're flooded with so many intergalactic movies. Yeah. And then there's so much artistry Absolutely. In, in the Dune films. I think I think Denis really has created something unique in the sense that he really created the universe. I mean, yeah. everybody that works in those movies are at the top of their game, the wardrobe, the lining, the everything, the designs, everything. So whew, the first one was amazing, but I think the second one, I haven't seen it, but I was there. <laughs> <laughs> I think the second one is gonna be is gonna be really something out of uh, proportion yeah. uh, in the sense that the sets that I saw, the sets that they, they built, it was they were uh, huge and they f they were filled with so much art inside and the lining and the, the wardrobe, everything is, is really magical. I, I and I saw the trailer 
And I, I, I called Denis like, man, what is this? I'm in it and I can't believe I'm in it because <laughs> yeah. it's one of those movies that you feel like an actor, oh, I wish I could be in one of those. Well, I'm in it. <laughs> so it's, it's, and he's adorable. He's a great man. Have, have you, have you ever interviewed Denis Villeneuve? No. No, I have not. He's great. No. Yeah, he's he's great. rumored for the next Bond film too, which oh, I really? think would be amazing. Yeah. Oh, really? I don't know. He will do it for sure amazingly well. For this movie, uh, how does it work? Are you, are they using wires? Are you in a harness? How does it work when you're doing a live action Little Mermaid? I have no idea. It's all in the studio and they, they put us in these uh, uh, rigs and uh, call fork, whatever. I don't know. Is is what the is is some some stuff that the Olymp the Olympic athletes uh, use in order mm -hmm. to try to train to make uh, leaps on the air. Oh yeah, flips, flips on like the that. air. And what they do is they they put you in a harness and there's a long arm, and then you can go vertical, you can go horizontal, you can go like this because they move it, uh, and it's and it takes like six to ten people around the the machine to move it around so it's a choreography you have to talk to the the director will say i want him here and then there and then here goes up here goes down and you have to do your fishy moves <laughs> like with the shoulders to make believe that you are a fish and and uh, please tell me they call them fishy moves <laughs> That's how I called it. I know. I, 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 it was perfect. I just wish that that was actually in the the dialect they used. Yes. And I don't know how they do it. I saw the movie and still don't believe how good it looks. You know what's interesting is the amount of trust Absolutely. you have to have. You know, we're having this moment here. You're there. I see you. We're a couple of inches apart and this is it. And this is a situation where you're getting all this makeup and then you're being put in the, the fishy move 4000 machine <laughs> and, <laughs> and spun around and it's total trust that Absolutely. someone's going to take care of this and then it's going to look awesome. Absolutely. And and the only thing you have to, you can do, you have to do is to try to, to learn the lines, say the lines and forget about the whole noise around you because it's huge and try to be honest and try to go back to the big to what it means to perform and be able to be relaxed in, within all of these things around you because I just said it's a big leap of faith and then with that somebody else will do something else and when I watch the movie again yes of course there's a lot of CGI but it's so beautifully done it's so realistically done and at the same time it has so much magic that I, I don't I'm not pulled off by it I go like wow I believe that wow. they're under the water. It's a, it's it's something else. It's something else. But I mean, it's also it's been true since the Wizard of Oz. You can have all that stuff, but you look at the quality of the acting in the Wizard mm. of Oz, and that's what makes you mm. it sucks you in every time. Now they had the most sophisticated sets. They had you know color for the first time. They had everything they needed, but. And same thing with, I, I think, to a degree with like, you know, like a, even Gone with the Wind is your, it's, it's Clark Gable, Vivian Lee. It's like the actors have to make it happen eventually. Exactly. Yeah. They can get this assist, but it's exactly. got to be, as you said, I've always thought that this business uh, um, was, but I've always thought about my profession was I need to learn. All I've done is tried to learn how to be natural in a completely unnatural situation. Absolutely. Which was for years, it was lights, a band. Ladies and gentlemen, Javier Bardem, you come out, I've never met you. We've just done a sketch where a bear masturbated, uh, you know, and then you come and sit down and we're supposed to have a real conversation, but there's an audience there. Um, and I always realized, oh, it's just learning to make that honest in a completely ridiculous situation. Absolutely, absolutely. And that's hard. And also do it over and over and over again. So it's not, as Marlon Brando said, everybody's a performer because we all act in our lives in order to survive. But the professionals have to repeat it constantly. And that's true. Uh, and also do it on command. <laughs> on command. And exactly. go, you know, and yeah, go. action. Yes. And then you have to you have exactly. to have that scene, exactly. uh, you know, uh, Anton Chigurh has to walk in to that <laughs> gas station and have that scene, even though you're not ready, you don't feel like, but that's also just the training. Absolutely. The years and years of training. Yeah, the training and also the, there's a moment where you have to let go and and I embrace the fear and say, okay, I I I I can't control anything anything anymore, and it's all about 
get it lost in what you're doing and and try to find meaning or sense in in the journey while you're doing it rather than going with everything marked and knowing where you're heading and what's the goal no you just, you just go there you work hard in order to understand the whole picture now you jump into the abyss and see if it makes sense but again it's movies so somebody will make sense of it if you don't if you didn't make the sense somebody will make it happen in theater is different of course theater it's like okay you are so exposed that uh, if if you get lost then people will will notice <laughs> right you actually see them get up and start to walk out <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs>